All right, welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm Scott Shelley, otherwise known as the Cow Guy. Thank you very much for joining us. If you're just joining us, and if you've been with us all day, that's just my job to make sure you stay. How about that? Let's uh, dive right in. Let's see what's going on in corn. That's corn table has been a little bit better today. The uh, May is starting to give up the ghost, though. Down one and a quarter in that May contract, 767 and a half. 65 and three quarters is a low there, so we keep an eye on that. Now July's have gone unchanged at 760 and three quarters. So corn getting a little bit heavy here. Let's see what's going on in soybeans. This one's been lower, significantly lower. 34 and a quarter cents lower in the May to 16.54 and three quarters. And as you go out the curve or out the deferreds, 17 and a quarter cents lower in that no, which we thought was making a run towards 15. It did it overnight, but right now it's 14.78 and a quarter. How about Chicago wheat? Let's take a look at what that looks like. Chicago wheat is up 30 cents to 10.81 and a half in May. That's good, right? And 30 cents in July as well, 10.88 and a quarter. So. A lot of green on the screen when it comes to the wheat. Let's see what's going on in hard red wheat in Kansas City. 32 and a half cents higher in May, 11.39 and a quarter. That's pretty good, isn't it? Big range over there still though, about almost 50 cent range. Uh, we've got a 32 and a half cent gain in July at 11.42 and a half. How about spring wheat? I think the spring wheat in Minneapolis is higher as well by 15 cents. 11.42 and a quarter is last in that May contract. July is up 13 cents right behind it. 11.39 and three quarters. Let's take a quick peek at cotton. Cotton's higher as well, 233 in the May, but we also have that Deese up 248 to 117.96. That's what they're watching. All right, let's bring in our next guest analyst, Todd Horowitz. He's with Bubba Trading, and he is coming to us live from Las Vegas. Uh, Todd, thanks for being on the show. Well, I mean, there's a lot we could talk about, but what sticks out <laughs> of you the most? I know. It's, I'll, I'll, the floor is yours. You go for it. Hi, Scott. Great to be back with you. You know, look, I, I look at these markets and they're all over the place as they are almost every day. But I think the big thing to look at here is the real lack of volume. There's really very little interest. I mean, if I look at the volume in corn, wheat and beans, it barely registers, which is telling me that there's really not much going on, which is, you know, the, the price is moving more on air than is moving on actual uh, trading or volume. And a lot of the farmers that I talk to are saying that they're holding back because they feel that they're going a lot higher and they're not giving up so quickly here. And in fact, the guy from South Dakota just said to me, hey, I'm not getting rid of what I got now. I'm holding on to it because I think we're going much higher from here. And I do agree with that. I think they're going much higher. Well, I mean, there's every reason to think that that could be the case. I mean, it just as long as not everybody thinks that, right? Be because obviously you know that we've got CPI and PPI this week. That's going to be a little bit of a play into that because if that inflation index, you know, ratchets up higher, it'll be interesting to see what the Fed's going to have to say about that. And I mean, we have any number of things, but you know what? This food crisis continues to keep being in the headlines. And I think I, that'll also be interesting to see how that works itself out. And Mother Nature hasn't gotten us off to a good start. So maybe your guys are right. You know what? And where where is the first, I guess we'll call it the first food riot going to happen? I mean, what country? I mean, there's a lot of countries that aren't, aren't, aren't as fortunate as the United States. And there's going to be there's going to be a lot of food shortages next year, including here. But, you know, some of the poor nations are going to really have some battles and that could create right. some wars as well. It's like uh, what the food director of the U.N. said, we're going to be taking from the starving. We're going to be taking from the hungry to give to the starving. That's not good. All right, stay right there. We're going to go away and pay some bills. We'll be right back to talk livestock with Todd Horowitz for Bubba Trading after these messages. All right, welcome back to Market Day Report. Thank you very much for staying with us. And if you're just joining, I'm going to make sure you stay. Let's take a look at the live cattle markets. That's what the cow guy does, right? Let's, uh, this is quiet, but um, just a little bit better. We're up uh, seven cents in the front, April 137.90. Go out to October and we're sharply unchanged. And that Deese is off by 12 cents too. So not a lot happening over there. Trying to eke out some gains on the day. We'll take it. All right, feeders, what are they doing? Are they getting a little bit better now? That, yeah, they are just a tad actually. Corn's come off the tie, so this one's found a little bit of a footing. Feeders are now only down. A buck 52 in the front, that's April. A buck 55, 155 spot 02, sorry. Uh, let's get October's off a dollar away out the deferred, so 178.42. How about lean hogs? What's that look like? Well, they're eking out a gain here, aren't they? The April's not. April's off. That's trading heavy. That's off 52 cents to 98.50. But you do see gains of between, say, 12 and 77 cents as you go out the deferred. So lean hogs putting on some green on the screen, too. All right, let's bring back in Todd Horowitz. Uh, he's with uh, Bubba Trading in Las Vegas. Uh, Todd, how are your, what are your thoughts on when it comes to the uh, livestock? 
I think, first of all, we have the same issues here, Scott. There, if you look at a volume chart, <laughs> there isn't any. I mean, it's almost zero. It's like they haven't opened yet. Uh, I think that, you know, cattle will go in the, in the opposite direction of crude as a rule. I think that that's an inflation issue. We're going to hear some numbers this week, which I think will be uh, not accurate. They'll be understated. And I think that's been one of the big problems. Uh, hogs, I think, will be the strongest here. Uh, and I think we, what we saw in, in a little bit of a pullback is just some natural selling. I mean, geez, we're, we're, we're at $1.14 or whatever. So we're certainly up there in higher levels. And I expect them to even go higher. But, you know, we get to a point where, you know, they say high prices look your high prices. And that's what I think we've seen. I mean, you and I both remember the days of 25 cent, you know, wings. So there's only a certain amount of money you'll pay for a bowl, you know. <laughs> I mean, is two bucks a wing too high? Who knows? But I mean, at some point in time, we push back about a bag of bones. So that's going to be something that uh, folks are worried about. Also, are, are you uh, kind of watching what might happen with the Fed and what might happen with the economy and what that could do to these livestock prices? Oh, that would be very devastating, I think. I think we built this market on, on, on cheap money, no interest rates. And I think that that's going to be the issue because they're going to have to raise rates, Scott. We are not going to go to the easier alternative, which is to, to pump oil. So they're going to have to hike rates. They can talk all they want. I mean, Bullard said that we're on, 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 in, in concert with the where we should be, which is totally ridiculous. I mean, rates should have been a lot higher, and we should not be running into, at the last minute here, uh, higher rates. And when higher rates come, that means Americans' costs go up, borrowing costs go up, farmers' costs go up. It is not a pretty picture, which is one that if they had done properly and, and added and adjusted every quarter like they should have for the last 10 years, we'd be at the proper interest rates because actually nominal rates are still negative. So we, we're in agreement, and I'll just say this. It uh, looks like they're going to have to try to kill the economy so they can get inflation under the control, and that's not a good idea. All right, appreciate it. Thanks uh, very much. Todd Horowitz, he's with Bubba Trading in Las Vegas. Bring it back to Nashville so I can throw this over to Janet.